Well, I'm right on time, Jim. So I see. This is the easiest 5,000 you've ever earned. Have you got that report ready for the chief? Just finished putting my John Hancock on it. And the beauty of it is, there's plenty more where this comes from. You better read it over before you pay off. You might not like what's in there. What is this, a joke? No, it's a report on the Downey property. I sunk prospect holes all over that place. That land spotted. She's a dead one. We knew that before you went up there. Your trip was just to make the thing look good. You weren't set up there to investigate anything. Your job was to give us a report that would... That's what you've got. Oh, never mind that. We want a report from you that will sell the property, not condemn it. Then we're just wasting our time. We'll fix that. Have you got a couple more of those blanks? Yeah, plenty of them. Well, you'll get a couple of them and sign them. We'll fill them in later to suit ourselves. I don't do business that way. Starting today, your ways are going to change. I don't think so. I'm sure of it. I have a little persuader here. That's a fine way to treat your customers. Larry Doyle! Gee, it's good to see you again, Larry. And that goes double for you, old boy. But tell me, what was the rumpus out here all about? Oh, he didn't like the way I made out a report about some mining property up in the hills. I forgot that the customer is always right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I forgot something. He almost got away without paying my expense account. Oh, you throw him out and then make him pay for it, huh? <laughs> nice cabin you got here, Jimmy. Yeah, but I'm leaving in a couple of days. Larger place? Wide open spaces. Oh, as bad as that? You just saw $5,000 fly out that door. Why didn't you hold on to it? Oh, a couple of promoters trying to unload a shotgun claim. A good report from me would have been worth $5,000. Rope, Jimmy. It's all in the game. Why be crooked when there's so many good claims that have never been staked? Besides, I can always make expense money. You still got that application I sent you for the mounted? Yeah, it's right here on the desk. Ever think of using it? A couple of times. Why don't you? Well, I don't like the idea of being cooked up in one place for three years. Why, in the last year, I've been across the continent from Dawson to the North Shores of Hudson Bay. That's covering a lot of territory. You better let me turn this in when I get back to post. It'll only be a month or six weeks. If anything comes up in the meantime, why, you can always refuse the appointment. What do you say? All right. Fine. Well, now that we've got that settled, I want a bit of intro information, Jimmy. You know a fellow named a Hammond? A uh, person named uh, Buck. Hammond? Are you looking for him? Yeah, he's wanted up north for a killing. <laughs> well, what's funny about that? Why, well, I almost hit you with him as you came in that door. What did he put up? He's working a claim up about five miles above El Dorado. Alone? No, there's a couple of the fellows with him. Well, I'll chase right out after him. Why, uh, you'll be here when I get back. Sure, I'll be here. Go on. Sure you don't want me to go with you? <laughs> well, it's just a routine matter. I'll be seeing you. Goodbye.
We found that in his pocket. Nice reports have been reaching me about you, McKenna. Thank you, sir. Like the work? Very much, sir. There's just one request that I would like to make. Yes? I would like to have the opportunity of bringing back the man who killed Larry Doyle. That's already been attended to. Troopers are out looking for him. But I'm sure I could help. I know the man. So do we. Have your patrols ever taken you up into the vicinity of uh, Ghost Mountain, Cameron? Not that I recall, sir. Mm, we've had some reports from north that there's some trouble there, and I believe that you two men can handle it. Before you enlisted, uh, you were in the engineering profession, weren't you? Yes, I specialized in mining. Ever happen to know an engineer named Madison? Madison. Is his first name Thomas? That's the man. He's very well known in the States. I met him only once and then for just a few moments. Would you recognize him from this? That's a very good likeness, sir. Yeah, well, Madison has disappeared like a puff of smoke. All the information we have is that he's been investigating abandoned mines in the Ghost Mountain region. This is an extraordinarily remote spot because of its peculiar geography. Uh, it uh, used to be, years ago, a thriving mining town, but it's petered out overnight. There's been quite a few strange stories told about that place. You and uh, Cameron are going to have a chance to verify them. McKenna's knowledge of mining should be of assistance. Let's take a look at the map. Now, let's see here. Madison made his headquarters in Queen City. I think you should start your operations from there. And in view of the character of the work, it may be better if you uh, discard your uniforms. However, that is a matter for you to decide. Old-timer. Heard any? Well, I got rheumatism and the blues and my liver's kind of out of killer and my kidneys ain't so hot, but outside of that, I'm all right and I'm just aching to get back at them laughing hyenas. <laughs> yeah, and that goes for you, too. Come on, put up your dude. Come on, no, I want to warm there. up. Come on, come me. on, come yeah. on, get, come on, get. Uh, uh, you're the winner. Uh, well, you're showing good judgment. <laughs> Hey, McKenna! Jim McKenna! <laughs> Missouri, how are you? Oh, I'll stay. It's sure great to see you again, son. You're looking as fit as a high-powered rifle. You old rascal. You up to your old tricks, huh? Well, you never heard of me being able to teach an old dog new ones, did you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wendy, this is Missouri. He's been thrown out of more bar rooms than Cary Nation Rex. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm still going strong, too. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I'm sorry I picked on you, partner. I didn't know you was a pal of Jim. <laughs> no harm, that old timer. <laughs> well, you can't tell. When I get mad, anything's liable to happen. Hey, what are you doing in Queen City? <laughs> oh, I slipped one over on the old woman. About six months ago, things got kind of warm, and I just yeah, made... Yeah, and you thought a change of climate might do you some good. Well, I figured this was the last place in the world she'd ever be able to find <laughs> me. <laughs> hey, uh, you seen any likely-looking prospects? Well, I ain't been able to raise a grub stake lately, Jim. There's some bacon and beans money. Ah, oh, no, I couldn't take it. Here. No, I couldn't Go take on. it. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. No. All right. Well, I'll tell you. If you'll agree to take 50% of anything I find, she's a go. 50-50 Great. Ha-ha. <laughs> Bye. 
Come on. Go ahead there, old pal. Three bears, partner. What brings you boys up here? Oh, we heard they were opening Ghost Mountain again. We thought we'd look into it. Say, that place is plum poison. I'd stay away from there if I was you. Why, it's deserted, isn't it? When I first came up into this country, I started up there. I got to the head of the canyon, and I got a warning to turn around and get back. A warning? What kind of a warning? A warning that took a frying pan right out of my hand when I was cooking supper. I turned to him and said, if you do that again, I'm coming right over there and spit tobacco juice in your eye. Made you mad, huh? Mad? Huh. Well, they changed my tune, they changed it in a hurry. The second bullet that came my way sizzled through my hat and missed me about a half an inch. And that was just the start of it. I got out of there in a hurry and I ain't been back since. No, sir. Thanks, partner. You any idea who's trying to keep people out of that territory, Missouri? <coughs> yeah. Bob Stacy, the fellow that just came in here, and the fellow by the name of Hardy. They own this place here. They clean up in the Klondike country, high-grading, crooked gambling, and jumping claims. They make the laws around here, and they enforce them. Well, I always did wonder whether they could play one of those harps or not. And this looks like a good chance to find out. Eh, hey, Wendy? Well, you're tackling a tough job, boy. You're just playing with dynamite, that's all. Those other angels are going to be plenty surprised when they find what a couple of ugly prospectors they got. Well, you may be prospectors, but Stacy won't know you from human beings. And that ain't scare talk, either. Hey, did you pull that fool trick? That shot was just a warning. Where are you boys headed for? Thought we might do a little prospecting up Ghost Mountain Way. Just wasting your time. Plenty of abandoned mines up there, aren't there? Sorry, but you better look some other place. Yeah, where do you think you're going? See what Jake wants. Okay, Chief. Come on, boys.
<laughs> Look. Well, at least that bird's showing some good sense by getting out of here. For the love of my, get me out of here! Get out of there. Looks like an old mine shaft. Yeah. Hadn't been for that ladder, you'd have gone all the way through there, Wendy. Sure would. I'm going down in there and take a look around. And you stay here and take care of anybody that shows up. You think it's ladylike to tickle a fella in the ribs with a gun? Where's my father? Your father? You understand English, don't you? Well, yes, but... Well, then why don't you answer me instead of standing there grinning like an ape? Well, how should I know anything about your father? You know you wouldn't be here. The only reason I'm here is... Yes, it's because my father's hidden in one of these caves. Who are you? You know very well who I am. Well, lady, I don't want to be rude, but I don't know you from Adam. Or should I say Eve? I'm Jane Madison. Is Thomas Madison your father? Well, then you know about my dad's disappearance. Well, I heard rumors down in Queen City. Just put two and two together. That isn't true. He wouldn't do that without telling me. Someone learned of his discovery and... What discovery? Well, I can't tell you. I know he's hidden in the cave in this mountain. Has anyone tried to find him? Mr. Stacy. You know him? Oh, uh, well, I've heard of him. Well, he and Dad had a business deal together. He said he searched everywhere for Dad, but 
You couldn't find him. Well, shall we go? All right. Why did you let them get so close to you? I shot to warn them, but they kept coming. I stepped out in the road in front of them and stopped, and they, and we uh, talked a while, and then the next thing I remember, I saw stars. Which way did they go? The last I saw them, they head towards the mountain. Come on, boy. Wendy Cameron. It's a, it's a pleasure. How do you do? Don't you think it's about time you introduce yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm Jim McKenna. <laughs> Say, don't you think we'd better get out of here before the building collapses? <laughs> <laughs> My horse is over there. I've never taken you for prospectors. Why do you say that? <laughs> oh, woman's reason. Just because. Well, I guess we're not the sourdough type. Laurel thickets all over our faces. <laughs> You're not. You see, uh, we're a book-learned geologist of sorts. We try to put some method in our prospecting. Yeah. Does a fella have to fry pancakes in his shovel? Chew the back in his sleep before you consider him an 18-carat bush loafer? <laughs> <laughs> Why, of course not. Well, what I meant to say was... Well, I just wouldn't put you down as prospectors. Not prospectors. Get out this way. Take it easy. Don't be so clumsy. Now, easy, now, easy. Are well, you sure he's the same McKenna? Said he was, didn't I? Yeah, let me do that. Hal of Doyle's, wasn't he? Yeah. Hmm. Think that's why he's up here? I traveled all over the Northwest before hitting Queen City. Maybe he did too. Did you recognize the other one? No, nah, I never saw him before. But the girl was Jane Madison. Say, Hardy, McKenna's an engineer, and so's Madison. I wonder if his daughter could have... Oh, there's nothing to that. Stacy's taking care of her. 
Well, now, supposing she sends word out without him knowing it. <laughs> if that happened, the place would be overrun with Mounties. You're one of those fellows who can't be told anything, Madison. You know it all. How much longer do you think you can keep me here? Just as long as it takes to make you talk. Well, I'll talk and talk plenty, but not now. Take your time, but remember, there isn't a minor claim of this country that the chief isn't interested in, directly or indirectly. One of these days, you'll find out that I'm a citizen of a free country. All right, Mr. Free Citizen. Play your own hand and see how far you go. But if you take a tip from me, you'll talk quick. Or maybe you won't be able to talk at all. Able to get anything out of him? Nah, he's as stubborn as an old mule. How's the arm, Buck? Oh, as good as can be expected. McKenna recognize you? What's the difference if he did? He'd be trying to locate you. Well, you don't have to worry about that. I'll handle him. We don't want to attract attention to this place. After seeing Madison's girl, won't he be snooping around anyhow? Well, all we have to do is put on a couple of more guards. Yeah, there's an easier way than that. We're going to take you out of circular. I tell you, I'll stop him before he has a chance to do anything. I mean, you'll be laid up a couple of weeks with that arm. Hardy and I are going out of town. Hello, Mr. Stacy. Lady, give an account of yourself. I haven't seen you for now, let me see. In three days. I don't want to make a nuisance of myself. You know you couldn't do that. <laughs> that would be a very easy thing to do. But uh, I'd like to see you try it. What have you been doing? Trying to find Dad. Where? Ghost Mountain. Jane, it's dangerous for you to fool around those old shafts. Mr. Stacy, I'm sure Dad is being held there. You're absolutely wrong. I've searched every one of those mines thoroughly. I know something's wrong. As we were leaving, we were chased by some men. We? Who was with you? Mr. McKenna and Mr. Cameron. I met them in one of the tunnels. Hmm, well, that sort of changes things. I'll have a talk with McKenna and Cameron and hear what they have to say. And starting tomorrow, I'll fine comb these hills. Is there anything I can do to help? The best thing you can do to help is not to worry your head and leave everything to me. And I'll look after it. Stacy. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, boys. I'm afraid I've got some news that's going to spoil your appetite. Mighty bad news to do that. How's your steak, Wendy? Just thin as butter. I was thinking of boarding in another one. <laughs> Boys, you ought to quit these parts. You know, running a business like mine, a man overhears things. You mean what? Personally, I've always found it pretty good sense to get somewhere else before trouble starts. My sentiments are different. Just a friendly tip? That's right. You know, I'm not the kind of a fella to keep Mum where his friends are concerned. Who's doing all the talking? You know, it seems funny, but I... I just can't remember. But if I were you boys, I'd pack up and mosey out of town. Thanks, but we never did own any baggage. You never eat potatoes, do you, Wendy? No, um, uh, uh, the peas. <laughs> do you like peas? Hello, Bob. Hi. Which one of you is McKenna? I am. 
See the man? Yeah, that's him, all right. Ever know anybody named Buck Herman? Sure. Killed a friend of yours named Doyle, didn't he? Yeah, what about it? Then you followed Herman up here and killed him, didn't you? Yeah, you shot him behind the trees. Herman didn't have a chance. Why, it was cold-blooded murder. All right, McKenna, come on. Pipe, son. You're just in time to sit down and take the wrinkles out of your belly. I'll just take you up on that, old timer. Great. <laughs> Just plain food, but plenty of it. <laughs> Anything I can do? Nary a thing. You know, I was commencing to worry. About what? Uh, you had sort of a ruckus last night, didn't you? Oh, a little one. Nothing serious. You worry you ain't cut off too big a chunk of raw meat? Well, right now it looks pretty big, but... I think we'll be able to nibble it down to our size. I told you you was biting off a big chunk of trouble. Stacy and Hardy has busted many a good man. We'll try to give them a run for their money. Well, they'll get you if you're in their way if it takes them 20 years. Well, this time, Stacy and his gang are up against something a lot more powerful than just Windy and me, Missouri. Yeah? He's bucking the Royal Canadian Mounted. Oh. What sort of a gin is this, Hammond? Bad, clean too. You seen anyone pass this way? Not a soul but yourselves. Don't put that out! Huh? Listen, pile some green brush on there. Give one long and two short smoke signals. Do it a couple of times, then wait for Windy. What fool trick you up to now? Well, I'm going to follow them and see if they'll take me to the hideout. Now, when Windy gets here, head for Ghost Mountain. I'll be looking for you there. Well, keep your eyes and ears open. We got your work cut out for you.
You certainly are a couple of bright boys. No use to crying over spilt milk. He just outsmarted us, that's all. Well, that's enough. I think I'll go out and look things over myself. Out there, Hammond. Alive? Yeah, some kicking. Got any rope? You bet. Thought you'd better come back and play some music, huh? Yeah, and I brought the bandmaster with me. Say here, little piece. Get him out, Wendy. See what he's got to say for himself. Come on, Missouri. Give me a little help here. All right. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. After killing a man, most guys light out. Now stand back, don't cry. You mean I killed Hammond? Looks mighty like it. He was alive when we put him in the wagon. Well, you think I'd bring him in here if I killed him? Somebody must have ambushed him on the way in. It sounds mighty weak to me. Yeah. I ran across Hammond on Ghost Mountain. I wanted to show you that he was alive and that I didn't murder him. Well, he ain't alive now. It looks to me like someone thought it would be kind of difficult to explain that murder charge if he landed here alive. Any more remarks like that out of you, and you're going to find yourself in plenty of trouble. Say, now I'm uh, starting to get mad. I'll have to take you in and keep you right handy for a spell. Well, what would I kill him for? That's what I'm going to find out. First of all, I'll take that six gun of yours. Now I am mad. Hey, wait a minute, Hardy. That's cool. Who says this man killed Hammond? No need for no one to say it. They find Hammond out there, Freddy's gonna talk and... Couldn't happen like that without me and Roper knowing about it. Are you and Roper mixed up in this? We've been with them all the way into the mountain. Been with them all the way in? Have we, Roper, or have we not? We sure have. You claim that, too? Why, it's proof what I've been trying to tell you all the time, doesn't it? Hmm. This changes things. But I ain't satisfied, not by a long shot. All right, you can go. But I'm going to look into this from thorough. Hey, a couple of your men carry Hammond in there.
What'd you do that for? Well, any dog with a sore foot knows when it's hard walking. Say, do you know who bushwhacked Hammond? Of course not. Hey, who did? Haven't the slightest idea, but I'm going to find out. Well, boys, if it gets too tough, Brent and I have got a couple of smoking irons that usually work when we pull the trigger. Don't they, Brent? We remember that, and thanks for using them the other night. You know, you boys are too trustful. Come on, Roper. I wonder what their idea was for Landa Hardy. Funny, isn't it? Yeah, almost too funny. Looks like we threw a monkey wrench in somebody's machinery. Yeah. Think we better stick around for a couple of days? That might be a good idea. He's inside. <laughs> Listen, I'm a little fed up on the treatment you've been getting, Madison. Well, it's about time you were. Listen, I don't want anybody to hear me. See? Now, uh, I've been kind of holding the bag around here. You never saw anybody but me. Well, what about it? If I forget to close that door when I leave here and give you this gun, you'll forget you ever saw me. You mean you're willing to give me a chance to escape? If you promise you never saw me. You'll take my word? Yeah, I'm trying to get out from under. But the others, who are they? Well, they're friends of mine. I wouldn't squeal on them. This is between you and me. All right. I'll forget I ever saw you. That takes a little off my shoulder. Thank you. I'll leave that door open. Here, you hold the horses for me. Say, listen, Jim will skin me alive for letting you go in there alone. He'll skin you alive for bringing me down here anyhow. Huh?
You try that way, Wendy. Drop that gun. Don't shoot, Jim. That's father. Jane. How did you get here? Oh, I followed Jim and Wendy. Who? Oh, Mr. McKenna and Mr. Cameron. Well, Mr. Madison, I'm McKenna. This is Cameron. We were helping her locate you. Although she did agree to remain at home until we got back. I did not. I said I'd be there when you got there, and I will. I'm going back with you. I'm too upset to thank you properly now. All this happened so suddenly. You think someone may have heard that shot? Yes. One of the men made a proposition to me that the others knew nothing about. What kind of a proposition? He told me if I wouldn't prosecute him, he'd leave me a loaded revolver and forget to lock the door. And you accepted? Naturally, although I was doubtful of the outcome. There's something wrong here. See if we can get out the way we came in. He gave you that gun for just one purpose, to kill either Cameron or me. What? You found something if somebody wants or you wouldn't have been kidnapped. Well, that's right. I located the old dame that was supposed to have petered out. I have an option on all this property. Who's the option with? Stacy and Hardy of Queen City. After what happened this morning, they expected me to come back here, and when I did, it gave them an opportunity to put you on a spot where you had to talk or face a murder charge. When does your option expire? What date is this? Today's the 19th. It expires tonight at sundown. Hunt and several other fellows have been waiting out there. They're starting in now to see what's what. We don't have to go out that way. Follow me. What's this? A check for the balance due on my option. It's for $30,000. That's what the contract calls for, isn't it? Read this paragraph. It is further agreed that the party of the second part, Thomas Madison, will pay to the parties of the first part, Stacy and Hardy, the sum of $30,000 in legal currency before sundown on the 19th of September. In the event of the party of the second part failing to meet this requirement, this contract shall then become null and void. You get the point? No. Legal currency means cash. No check. You accepted my check for the initial payment. But I'm not accepting this one. A contract is a contract. And legal currency means exactly what it says. Oh, but that's merely a formality. You know Mr. Madison's check is good, and if it wasn't, the contract would be broken anyway. Cash is what I want. $30,000 cash. And before sundown. But that's an impossibility. You know I bank at Rockville. Now, how can I get there and back before sundown? Well, that's your worry, not mine. There's a slim chance you can make it, son. How? By going over to the mountains instead of sticking to the road. There's a shortcut the miners used to use. Where is it? About a mile and a half out of town, there's a sign on the right-hand side of the road. Just turn off there and go straight over the mountains. Thanks, Missouri. I may be able to get over there and back. If you're willing, I'll try. Willing? Well, I'll never forget it, but I don't see how you can well, do it. There's a shortcut through the mountains. Endorse this so I won't have any trouble at the bank. Stay 
here. Keep your eye on Stacy and Hardy. Don't let them out of your sight. Don't worry about that, McKenna. We'll take care of that. We trailed Hamlin as far as here, then we lost him. When they accused you of murdering him, I remember that Doyle had a pal named McKenna. That rope here recognized cameras, so we figured it was all right. Oh, I see. You better get going if you're gonna make it by sundown. Thanks, boys. Get hunting the boys, and make sure he doesn't get back with that money. No slip up this time, understand? Don't worry. We'll take care of him. Get out of there, Wendy! Yeah. Time's up, Madison. And now that the deal has fallen through, I'm ready to make you another offer. Nothing you have to offer would interest me. Jim's coming. All right, Jane, I got it. You missed it by three minutes, McKenna. Too bad. The sun's set. You're too late, Jim. You met the sun shining, don't you? There's the money. Count it and give me a receipt. This ain't legal. You better take the money, Stacy. You're going to need it. You're under arrest for kidnapping Mr. Madison. What are you talking about? Hardly did all the talking necessary. 
Where's your authority? Royal Canadian Mounted. Come on. You'll have plenty of time to think about it. You'll have to sign the complaint, Mr. Madison. Mind coming along now? Of course not. 